We all make mistakes. Mm. God sees the heart. But when we give him praise, that build uh, up, that gives us strength. When he gives to we re recognize him thank for you. what he does, thank but and just thank him. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, I know about little cherry. First thing we teach little cherry, he gives us his time time. Amen. And thank you. But it is the strange thing of all God has done for us and how hard it is for us to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You had to have a whole lot of words. You had to look around and see who was looking at you. Even when you get up in the morning time and you don't have a, a long prayer. Yes. And, and, and you may not even want on the outside like I do sometimes, but just see God's sunlight coming through the window. Lord, I thank you. What did when you lay down? I heard somebody say, when you lay down and went to sleep last like night, you might say sleep like I do sometimes. But the minute you went in that deep sleep, you don't know what time it was. So you had no idea you got to get up. You don't know what's going on. And your self-conscious mind may be running around sometimes. But you don't know. you get in a state of mind of sleeping that you don't know anything that's going on. Even sometimes when you're hurting and you can just get to sleep, feel like the pain is gone. So why can't you just give a praise? Amen? Amen. Amen. Just a couple minutes. I just want to hear anything you want to say. Once I do get all of my Lord say, Jesus Christ, Pastor Lord, that house on the house, and you can hear me in the house. You know, I just thank God for my health and strength. And uh, I can't remember the house where I was born in, but as, as I think about it, the house that I can remember, I thank God that now I can hear the sweet. Jesus. And so now I have the, y'all know, Jesus. we have to use the wood of a person. But I thank God for where he even brought all of us from. God has been good to all of yeah, us. Um, you know, yet things look bad, but God is still in his soul. No matter what we can say and do, we still can look to the Lord because through it all, yeah. he is right there with us. And, but we just thank him for, for his grace and mercy. And uh, I shall continue praying for me, and I pray to you the best I know how to do. Amen. I heard sitting next said that one we all should come together one day. Amen. The Sunday school lesson talking about word peace. Yeah. There be a peace beyond our understanding. A word peace. Mm -hmm. No more word. And, and not just for one, he said, he just talked, we, we come together as one nation. Mm -hmm. One king. One king. For what a time that would be. The internet, I heard it, 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 it not even imagine. We talk about a world peace. No more nucleus war. Yes. Yes. No, no, no more shooting or whatever you want to call it. A world peace. Wouldn't that be that? But that shall be a time. That shall be a time.
at our program here, and we see that we are at uh, the area of announcements, and Sister Diana Diggs is going to come with the announcements. Then <clears throat> we're going to have the welcome by Sister Shirley Woodridge. members who are battling cancer. Please let them know about the foundation. The gift application process is simple and can be accessed through our website, which is edgecombcancersupport.org. A board member or the ECU Health Edgecomb Cancer Center. A single copy of the application is also attached and you may certainly make copies as needed. Second, we are asking your church to partner with the Edgecomb Cancer Support foundation by making a financial donation. Perhaps you can raise, your church can raise money to donate funding for one gift, maybe more. It says donations are appreciated and accepted year round and we will acknowledge your church's donation through our social media outlets. If you have any questions, please email the foundation or call the board members, Sabrina Vinyl or Johanna Owens. Churches play a vital role in Edgecombe County and we appreciate your partnership in our efforts to assist Edgecombe County residents who are actively being treated for cancer. Please join us. Now the church calendar and upcoming events. We will be celebrating our 120th church anniversary in November. You, you may begin paying your church anniversary assessment of $120 as early as today. If you turn 65 years old before the end of the year, please notify a member of the secretarial staff so that you may be added to the senior citizen recognition list. If you have church historical items, pictures, updates, corrections, etc., that may be included in the church history book, please get them to a member of the secretarial staff no later than September 15th. Vacation Bible School will be July 3rd, 5th through 7th at 7 p.m. We invite you all to attend. Minister Howard will be preaching July 11th at 7 p.m. at Union Chapel Missionary Baptist. Church at 12 401 U.S. Highway 421 in Burgard, North Carolina. Our next business meeting will be in person on Friday, August 4th at 7 p.m., asking all members to be present. Men's Day service will be held August 6th at 11 a.m. Brother Camille Nancy is the chairperson. Edgecombe County Sheriff Deacon Cleveland, Cleve Atkinson, will bring forth the message and Edgecombe County Sheriff Choir will bring her the music. Our women led in Christ's breakfast will be August 19th at 9 a.m. Co-pastor Angela Williams will be the speaker and Reverend Zena Vines will be the presider. If you plan to attend, please contact Minister Howard or Sister Kishana Braswell. 
We encourage every member of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church to support and attend all or as many churches functions as possible. We are all one body in Christ and we need all members of the body working together to keep the body strong and productive. Our pastor's vision statement, I believe that all people matter to God and that Christ's message and ministry through the local church is the hope of the world. Reverend Malcolm E. Lewis. And I thought for the week, though we will face trials, adversities, disabilities, heartaches, and all manner of afflictions, our caring, loving Savior will always be there for us. That was from Ronald. On, seven, on August the 4th, which will be our next scheduled fitness meeting, we ask that all members please be present. We will be voting and discussing some very important matters uh, related to the Anderson Chapel. And we ask that you would be present. I know many have been joining in on the free conference call and trip to uh, the ARC experience next year. If you have any questions, please see uh, Diana or Lois about that. But uh, we are in preparation and planning for that. So we want to give you a full year to prepare yourself for that if you would like to go. Again, this choir. <laughs> to our people, give them a hand. To our mothers, to our trustees, our ushers standing by the door. And to yourself, give yourself a hand. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rise to our feet as the choir shall give us an opening selection. Amen.
my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, <laughs> Pastor Lewis, to Minister Howe in her presence, to the deacons, mothers, in her absence, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, amen. To our deacons, mothers, members, and friends. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am reading one passage today. John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Amen. Word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I do give my thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for blessing me to be in the house of the Lord one more time. <clears throat> so let's go into prayer this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, Lord, we come to say thank you one more time. And then, Heavenly Father, as we come today, we want to thank you, Lord, for blessing us to see our very, very new day. Father God, you let the pain, let the blood still run warm in our pain. Then, yeah, Father God, we will say thank you because you have food on our head, food on our table, and as we look around our home this morning, our home still were united as one. Well. We say thank you, Lord. Then, yeah, Father God, we just ask you to come into the house of the Lord today. Bless the pastor this morning as you bring forth your word. Bless it from the head to the bottom of his feet this morning. Then, God, we just ask you to come and just have your way. Oh, we just want to thank you because all you spiritual fellowship and covenant relations with one another. Have been made as we believe that by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the confession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and in this assembly, most our what is our bond of union with one another? We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love. What are our privileges and duties in this church? To strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort. 
promote his prosperity and spirituality, to sustain his worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines. What vows do we gladly make as stewards of what God entrusts to us? To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. What gracious tasks do we humbly assume? We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. What manner of life and conversation are we solemnly pledged? To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment. To avoid all selling, backbiting, and excessive anger. To abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage. And to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Since one is our master, even Christ, and we are all brethren, by what fraternal ministries are we to strengthen each other and adorn the teaching of our Lord and Savior? We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior, to hear it without delay. What is our agreement when we remove from this community? We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will be so
form in which it was taken. Yes, Lord, bless those that gave, bless those that have the desire to give, and could not at this time. That's all these things in your name, and in your name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you to everyone who forgives us, certainly taking the hand of the Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your gift and your giving and all that you have done for to support the mission and the work of the Madison Chapter. We're thankful this morning for each of you. I glanced down, I looked at the time, I, I said something seems to be a little off this morning. It's one of the first Sundays in about three or four months we haven't had a theme program going on and uh, we seem to be moving along a little fast. Yeah. But you know what? That's all right because the choir is singing. Yeah. Scripture has been read. Prayer has been read. And we're looking forward to a word from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. At this time, as we prepare ourselves for our altar call, I just want to, just want to say, uh, we pray for our sick and our shut-in. We pray for those who are going through various problems. We pray for relationship problems. We pray for mental problems. Yes, we pray for physical, spiritual, mental. Uh, I just want to say that on July the 15th at 10 a.m. at Bell Creek Headquarters, 1800 Slocum Street in uh, Goldsboro, we will be hosting a panel discussion on health, spiritual, physical, and mental. We would love for you to join us in the house, but if you're not able to join us, please join us in the free conference call or zone. And if you need the information, uh, it's still the same information we've been using, but if you would like to join in and listen to the panel discussion on that, it promises to be very important and enlightening. I believe that all of it works together spiritual, physical, and mental health all works together. But for one, if you don't have the spiritual, you're going to suffer mentally and physically. If you don't take care of the body, you're going to suffer physically, mentally, and spiritually. And we just ask that you will join the end with us. Likewise, we do share that on July the 14th, 15th, 21st, and 22nd, we are hosting in Goldsboro the free dental clinic. Uh, we do have uh, some slots available on the 21st and 22nd if you are dealing with a dental crisis. Uh, one young lady, one lady called me and she said that she has insurance. And she wanted to know if she could come. And I say that we do reserve, we, we, we don't ask, we don't discriminate, but we, like, we do ask those who have insurance and you can go to the dentist to please uh, let those who are not able to afford it. She said she has dental insurance, but her deductible is so high she can't afford it. I said, you, my sister, do not have dental insurance. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. You know, sometimes we look at things in different ways, but we thank God that he's blessed us to be able to reach out within our amen. community. Amen. One young lady called and said she spent the weekend in the hospital due to a toothache in the emergency room. If you ever had a dental pain, a toothache, you know what it's like. Yes. On the 21st and 22nd, we are doing health screening. And one of our very own uh, uh, subscribers will be helping us in that weekend because it's very important that we do screening, particularly within our community. So if, you, if you're not a company, spray the word that to those who do not have insurance, not able to go to the doctor and they would like to be screened for diabetes, high blood, uh, high cholesterol, uh, uh, and some others, please come uh, to 1800 Slogan Street in Goldsboro. God bless you. Thank you. At this time, we are going to prepare ourselves for our altar call. We do all invite you the opportunity to come, gather closer to the altar. We are going to do it in this fashion and manner this morning. Uh, those that are appointed this morning to read the sick book and shut in the list, they will read as music. It is played softly and it's say a reading. If you would like to come to the altar, you may come. The choir is going to give us a selection. If you would like to come to the altar, you may come. If you have a name of someone you would like to have, you just want to call out, you may do that. And after the list is read, 
But no matter whatever your condition, no matter who you are, let us remember that God is able to do all things but fail. He's brought us too far to leave us. We have come this far by faith, leaning on his everlasting arms. Come on. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. James 5, 15, King James Version. I'll sit and shut in, Brother Willie Johnson, Deacon Lee Owens Barnes, Sister Christy Kennedy, Brother Virgin Edwards, Brother Jesse Fleming, Sister Laura Willoughby, Sister Betty Wooten, Reverend Robert E. Wooten, the cancer patients and caregivers. At this time, if there are any names from the floor, Kevin Rockham, Harry Bridges, Father, in the midst of removing that rib, 
He created woman, dear Lord. And Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for what you have done, dear Lord. So Father, if we, you can do that, dear Lord. Father, surely, dear Lord. You can touch my body. If you can do that, Lord, surely you can touch them by it. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, Father, I'm praying for every diabetic case, every hypertension, every cancer, every heart attack, every arthritis, every rheumatologist. Father God, I bring forth, dear Lord, that, that mental state. Father, those conditions, dear Lord, that just can't be healed. And Lord, we place them at the altar this morning, at the feet of Jesus this morning, dear Lord. And Father, we say, fix it, Lord, fix it. Father, we give you the glory and the praise, dear Lord, for what you're about to do in somebody's life. So Lord, we just thank you right now. Not only do we pray for the health, spiritual, physical, and mental, but Father God, we lift up our young folks right now. Father God, they are dealing with so many things. Father God, the, the enemy is trying to destroy them. Father God, the community church, the Lord, doesn't have a place in their life anymore. Father, because the world is telling them this or telling them that. YouTube has confused their mind. Facebook, the Lord have too many things that just distracts them. But Father God, I'm so glad to know this morning, Father, that you have blessed us, dear Lord, to put a presence on YouTube. You have blessed us, dear Lord, individually, dear Lord, to put a presence, dear Lord, on Facebook. And Father God, help us, dear Lord, to use these tools, dear Lord. Father God, that we may draw our children back to you, dear Lord. Father God, for dear Lord, we know, dear Lord, that there's peer pressure. We know, dear Lord, that there's bullying. But Father, I'm so thankful to know, dear Lord, that for God so loved the world that he gave his own and the begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. Father God, help us to tell our children. Father, and as we tell them, dear Lord, Help us, dear Lord, to show them yes, yes, by the way that we live, yes, by the way that we talk, yes, by the way that we walk, yes, yes, Father God, that yes, we have been changed yes, by the mighty power of God. Yes, so, Lord, right now, dear Lord, yes, Father, if there's anything, yes, dear Lord, that we'll fail to mention right now in this prayer, yes, Father, we do lift up our leaders, dear Lord. Touch them, dear Lord. Whether they are our church leaders, community leaders, or world or national leaders, dear Lord. Father God, instill within them a heart, dear Lord, of love and compassion for your children, dear Lord. Father, we just thank you for all that you have done. It is in the blessed, matchless name of Jesus the Christ that I say, Amen. Amen.
We are going to read verses 1 through 8. And the scripture reads as thus from the King James. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so shall we also shall walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Amen. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Amen. Pray with us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come again to say thank you. Thank Father, you. we come standing behind the sacred desk that many have stood in years gone past. Yes. Father, we acknowledge that we are not able than ourselves, but Father, we ask that thou would send the preacher, the Holy Spirit, that it may use my tongue to preach your word, use my mind as a storehouse of your wisdom. Let the same spirit abide with these, your children, that someone may profess Jesus as Lord. This is your almost servant's prayer. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Pray with us this morning as the Lord will allow. Verse 7. Verse 7 says, For he that is dead is free from sin. Amen. And we want to talk to you this morning, Independence Day. Independence Day. Amen. Amen. For he that is dead is free from sin. Amen. Our Sunday school lesson this morning, those of you that have had your Sunday school book, you see that there was an intro that was printed in there, and I'll share with you, it says, Saturday, February the 10th, 2007, was a chilly day in Springfield, Illinois. It was a day that a senator from the Illinois addressed thousands of people in the town square. It had been rumored that he would run to be the Democratic candidate for the presidency of the United States. In his address, he invoked the memory of the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. He said to the crowd gathered there, it was here in Springfield, where the North, South, East, and West come together, that I was reminded of the essential de decency of the American people, where I came to believe that through the decency, we can build a more hopeful America. After this announcement, it would not take long before the rumor became more than a dream. In fact, it will soon be a reality. Hope was in the air, especially among African Americans in the country. Being mindful of God's desire not only to free his people, but also to, to restore them. Unlike President Obama, God has no limitation. Amen. And he does not need 
anyone's approval to make good on his promise. Amen. President Obama stood and brought hope to adopt a nation. Mm -hmm. Brought hope to a depressed segment of American society. Yeah. Brought hope to people that will grab hold of the dream. Yeah. But he had limitations. Yeah. That he had to fight and overcome. Yeah. He had his own physical limitations. Yeah. He had the naysayers. Yeah. He had the opposition. Yeah. He had those that was elected off their own words yeah. to say, if I am elected, I will fight President Obama every day. Right. Right. It's, it's interesting, Sister Olivia. Their declare was they will fight President Obama, mm -hmm. not the policy. Mm -hmm. But Deacon made their saying where to fight President Obama. All right. And this is one of the reasons why we have so much dissent in our nation. Because we make it personal. Jesus, All right. Jesus. We don't go against the policies, mm -hmm. but we want to make it personal and go against the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why our political elections have become so dirty. Yeah. All right. I've said it before, Patrick. If you want to, if you if you've forgotten something in your past that you can't remember, Hello. run for right. political office. Yeah. And there is somebody that will dig up and remind you of what you did 20 years ago. Why? Because it's not about policy. It's personal. And the more that I can tear you down, the better I look. Sadly enough, the political field is not the only place that's happening. It happens right in yes. our churches. Yes. 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 It happens in our local congregations. Yes. 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 It happens in our uh, associations. Yes. It happens in our national convention, yes. where it seems like we want to tear one another down yes. to build ourselves up. Yes. Yes. But I'm so glad to know. That God did yes. not tear anybody yes. down Amen. to Amen. save them. Yes. He said it's only begotten Son, yes. Jesus, Jesus the Christ, yes. to set us free. Yes. Independence Day. Yes. Yes. We talk about July 4th, yes. the independence of this great nation. Jesus. A few weeks ago, we celebrated Juneteenth. Uh -huh. Where we celebrate the 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 proclamation of the abolishment of slavery. Yes. Uh -huh. right. Those are important days. Some other of you may have some other independence day. Yes. Uh -huh. Some of you may remember that boyfriend or that girlfriend yes. that was carrying your life down and you yes. finally left them alone yes. and claimed yes. your independence day. Yes. Some of you actually may have been in a, a marriage that was, was breaking you up and yeah. carrying you down, and you proclaimed that as your independence yeah, day. Man. But I want to tell you that it was in a hot, stormy August yeah. 1968 that became my independence yeah. day. Yeah. That was the day that I accepted Jesus Christ yeah. as my Lord and yeah. Savior because I was a sinner and a wretch undone. Yeah. And because I accepted him yeah. as my Savior, Paul tells the world church in room that for he that is dead is free from sin. Yeah. When I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, yeah. I gave God my hand. Yeah. I gave him my heart. Think about it. I haven't crossed every T, mm -hmm. nor dotted every I. Yeah. But one thing about accepting Jesus Christ as Lord yeah. and Savior, 
I'm his. Yes. I stopped by this morning to tell you a few things that we need to be careful about. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Paul answers a question that was presented to him, whether through words or whether through action. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. God, Paul, there in that first verse, he says, What shall we then say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? There was those that began to believe that the more they sin, mm -hmm. the more grace they had. Right. Because grace is the unmerited favor of God when God gives us what we don't deserve. Jesus. So Paul was reminding them, just because you are saved, just because you are free, it does not mean that you can continue to sin. Mm -hmm. You know, all the time I tell you, when I introduce myself, and the first time I came here to Anderson Chapel, I stood and I said, my name is Malcolm Lewis, right. a sinner saved by grace. Amen. I was thinking the other day as I was in preparation and asking the Lord what to share with us today, I, I thought about uh, uh, my son, our uh, youngest son, Malik. And Malik used to watch the the uh, Pink Panther, uh, the original one with uh, with uh, Steve Martin, and he Malik. If even today, did you man, if you talk to him, he can probably give you almost word for word of that of that entire book. Right. Mm -hmm. There's one place in there where they are repeating the card credit card number, and he can do it. He can do it. He can do it down to the this French Latin number. But also in there, there is a scene where Steve Martin goes down, uh, 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 or Inspector Cusso as his uh, identity goes down as he is investigating the murder, and and, and he there's a uh, character in there, uh, Yuri the Shriner, and he say, Yuri the Shriner, Yuri the Shriner who shrines. That's what Cusso said. And I thought about it. A sinner, a sinner is a sinner who sins. I am a sinner saved by grace. I've sinned. I've fallen short of the glory of God. But God looked beyond all of my faults and he sent his son. And his son died. That I might be free from the burden of sin. Yes. Uh -huh. See, verse 7 says that we are, he that is dead is free from sin. Yes. It's not necessarily understand that we are free, that we yes. don't sin anymore, but we are free from the burden of sin. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Think of what is the burden of sin? For the ways of sin is death. Yes. But the gift of God is eternal life. I'm so glad to know that this morning. I got to tell you too, and please be mindful of this. Uh, there are some very good Christians out there. There are some very dedicated Christians out there. They're, they're so good that whenever, whenever they're around uh, the pastor, and they respect the pastor so much, that they won't say certain words. Right. They won't do certain things. Why? Because they respect the pastor. Jesus. And some don't want the pastor to know they say those words. Jesus. Don't want to know that they live like that. Yeah. And see, I say this, and uh, see, see, my children, my children respect me. Right. And there are things that my children will not say in front of me. There are some words that I hear that they say that they won't say in front of me. How do I know they, they say them? Because they have children. And they have siblings. And some of them 
use these words a lot more than you would ever think they use me. Because I never hear them say it. They could be with me for 24 hours and never say it. Why? Because they respect that. There are church folks just like that. That won't ever say it. But I've got to remind you I'm glad you respect me. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you don't use those words before me. Yeah. But I didn't die for you. Jesus. Right. Amen. I didn't suffer yeah. on the cross. Yeah. They didn't place a crown of thorns on my Jesus. head. Jesus. They didn't spear me in my yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. To blood and water come gushing out of my side. They didn't lay me in a tomb. Yeah. And I didn't rise on the third day. Thank you, God. To save you. Whereas you don't use yeah. those words before me. Yeah, right. Whereas you don't do those things before me. I, I've got to let you know in the words of, 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 of Dr. Uh, Prince, uh, 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 Pr William Prince, uh, who was uh, uh, one of my instructors. He said, man is a coward before man, but brave before God. Why? Because Dr. Barnes say that when man can't see you, God sees you. Yes, he sees every deed. Yes. He hears every word. Yes. Whereas President Obama had limitations, God has no limitations. Yes. Talk about Christmas, they talk about Santa Claus, but I want to tell you, you don't need to even worry about Santa Claus. Yes. Right. Whether we want to talk about the myth or not, we don't even worry about that. Yes. But God is real. Yes. How do I know he's real? Yes. Because when my eyes came open this morning, Blood was still pouring yeah. warm in my bed. Yeah. How do I know he's real? Yeah. I came in the church house this morning yeah. and I sat in Sunday school. Although I was busy, I was listening to the word yeah. of the Lord. How do I know he's real? Because yeah. when this choir starts singing, yeah. oh, he will come this far yeah. by faith. Yeah. Something yeah. staring up on the yeah. inside of me yeah. that reminded me that it was nobody but God oh, this morning. Oh, I want to tell you that the oh. independence. It's truly when you are free from sin, from the burden of sin. Because uh, we talk about Independence Day. Independence Day, uh, America declared itself free from the, the rule of Britain. But church of a living God, they are still bound today. You look around, there's so much poverty, so much hatred because America truly is not free. We talk about Juneteenth and yet Oh, there was a war that fought. There was a proclamation made. But there is still institutionalized slavery today. We talk about so many other freedoms that we have. But your true independence day comes when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because we are sinners and rest undone. Because of our sin, we are facing death. But God has took the burden of sin away from those that have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. He sent his son to die. He died for my sin and your sin. And because he died, the burden of sin is gone away. The church of a living God, they hung up on the cross. Nails in his hand, nails in his feet, speared him in his side, crown of thorns on his head. They spit on him. They mocked him. They did everything but say, but just called him the son of God. They say, if thou be the son of God, church of a living God. But Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they did. He took in the place his head in the locks of his shoulder. And he gave up the ghost. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a bar too. He stayed there 
all the night crying. Church of the living God. The disciples was wondering. They felt a great loss. They didn't know which way to turn. He stayed there all they said. The disciples was beside himself. He said he was coming back. They didn't know what to do. He stayed there all night Saturday night. He went down into the depths of hell. Got the keys of sin. Got the keys of death in the grave. And he came back to them. And early on Sunday morning. About the breaking of dawn. The earth began to shake. The angel came down. And rolled the stone away. And early on Sunday morning. My Lord and my Savior. He got up out of the grave. He took the linen cross. He took it and placed it on the cross. He laid it in such a way to let him know his work here on earth is finished. He walked out of that tomb. He walked out of that tomb. He walked on the earth another 40 days. After that, he ascended to heaven and now sits on the right hand side of God the Father. And I'm so glad that he still pleaded in our faith. I'm so glad that I died with him when I went down in the water. I was there buried with him in the water. But when I came up out of the water, I rose with him in the resurrection. And because he lived, because he died, because I died with him, because I live with him, I am free from the burden of sin. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Church of a little God. Independence Day can be yours today. Independence Day can be yours if you have not accepted him as the Lord and Savior. Today is the day. If you have accepted him, live the life. Shall we continue in our sin? Walk in our sin? God forbid. For he died for us. We may stumble, we may fall. But don't wake up in the morning. He determined this is what I'm going to do against God's word. But when you wake up, Lord, help me to say, to be who you would have me to be. That I may let my light shine wherever I may go. You may be trying to test the thing you have. You may stumble, you may fall. But get up. Say, so, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Say, you, Thank you, Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be in you, my Father, children. Thank you, We pray that this word has touched your heart and has given you up. That will help you walk in the newness of life. For this is what it's all about. Walking in the newness of life. We come to lift up. Worship and praise God. When we leave, are we leaving better than we can? We do not know Jesus in the part of this sin. We are still in invitation that you may come and accept him as Lord and Savior. Time is winding up. Time is winding up. We have fewer days than we think. I know that we have lived a long life. Some have lived a short life. But we are one day closer to hell today than we were yesterday. So this is your hour. This is your moment. As the choir says, say, let us rise to our feet. If there shall be more, if there shall be more, you may come and accept him as your Lord is saying.
need it. Jesus met with his disciples in the other road. He took the bread and took the wine and blessed it and gave to his disciples. And he said, that This is my body and my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of your sin. Paul took pen the paper and he reminded the church of Corinth that when we come together, that this is to eat the Lord's Supper. At this setting, the same song was coming for various things. So Paul reminded them that in Corinthians, verse chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 20, when you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Son. Some was behaving unsaintly, they was not acting as we say Christian like. They were some was taking bread before the other. For in eating one taketh before other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunken. Paul asked the question, What have you not houses to eat in and to drink? Or do you just despise the church? And shame them that have not. Think about your actions when we act the way we act. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Sometimes we just have to be disciplined. Sometimes. And when we are disciplined, many of us, we don't like it. But when we're telling the truth, listen and search yourself. But listen, Paul said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. It's covered up, but on the front of this it says often, do this in remembrance of me. In the remembrance. After the same manner, also, he took the cup. When he is up, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Yes, do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. When we partake of this, remember how Jesus suffered and died that we may celebrate the nation's independence day. But more importantly, our independence from sin. Yes. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, yes. ye do show the Lord's death mm -hmm. till ye shall come. Yes. This is a proclamation mm -hmm. for those that are around us. Yes. We're showing the Lord's death yes. till he shall come. Yes. And the important thing about that is, it's that he's showing his death, but until he shall come, he's coming again. Yes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourself. Don't eat unworthily. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily Eat and drink a damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Jesus. For this cause 
Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we shall not be condemned with the world. Amen. You know, that's why, that's why we are chastened. Because the Lord wants us to repent and change. He doesn't want to leave us to our own devices and be condemned. Amen. Why do we discipline our children? So the world wants. So the world wants. Many times we tell them, we tell them if we don't get you now, they'll put you in prison. And we don't want that to happen. But God chases us so we don't be condemned with the world. Amen. Wherefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man eat hunger, let him eat at home. That you come not together in con into condemnation, and the rest. But I said in order when I come. Amen. There's a lot more that the church of Corinth was doing. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I can't tell you it all right now. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. The rest he was said in order when he comes. Amen. Read your Bible. Amen. Study God's word. Yes. Pray to the Father. Yes. Love your neighbors. Yes. Love one another. Yes. Love your enemies. Yes. Those that hate you, despite yes, the rage, the rest will be set in order mm -hmm. when the Lord comes. Amen. And he's coming again. Yes, yes, but he sent his son to die <coughs> in this last night as he sat with the disciples. He took the cup, the cup of the bread and the plate of the bread and the cup of the wine. We have a package <coughs> cup, bread, and wine. But nevertheless, it is still symbolic. It represents the body mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Yes. The blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As he blessed this, we're going to ask Deacon May to bless this bread and to bless this wine. Mm -hmm. And as he shall do this, Think back to the backdrop of what we just read in the first Corinthians, what Paul admonished the church to not judge one another. But if you have an ought against your brother and sister, pray as the Father to remove that ought, that you may take this not unworthy of worthy. The truth be known, none of us are worthy of this outside of the blood of Jesus who justifies us. So he is able right now to cleanse us. As Deacon May shall bless, pray that the Lord will bless this bread and bless this wine. You pray for what the Lord has touched you. Amen. Amen. Father God, again, we come, Father God, we just thank you for this moment. Thank you for the Bible to send your only begotten Son that we might be redeemed back to you. So, Father God, as we come and celebrate this day, yes, it is do this in remote and yes, always. We come first of all just to thank you, Father God. Now, Father God, we ask before we eat, bless this wine and the bread. We ask you, Father God, that the air for in us, we know we all get to us. But, Father God, we ask for your forgiveness right now that we not grant any condemnation to our own soul, that we may be blessed. Now, Father God, we ask you to bless this wine, this bread. Change from the physical to the spirit. Bless it, Father God, that it be good for our soul. But we know it's good for us. Bless it, Father God, change. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. As the officer shall distribute the bread and the wine, we ask that if you have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you have not professed yet. Please let the plate pass you. This is for those that have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And 
For Jesus said, as often as we do this, we do show forth his death and suffering till he shall come again. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
with the and my father. And the church said, Amen. Amen. After they had died, they sang a hymn and they went out into the Mount of Olives. We do not have a Mount of Olives to go into, but we do have our homes, highways, and byways. As we shall prepare to this, this, let us rise to our feet. And if you are so inclined, if you're able to grab your neighbor's hand, don't. If you don't grab it, let it be because of your, maybe because of your health concern, not because of your heart concern, because we are here in the newness of Jesus Christ. We have come together to do as often as we do this in remembrance of him. Come on, quiet. You know that I still love Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.